Welcome back, welcome back, MTG Joe here. Um, we're gonna be playing a list I found off Twitter uh, from Contino Brewer. Uh, they got to Mythic with this list. It is a green-white tokens list, so something that I haven't seen much of in Standard, uh, probably since the start of Ravnica. Uh, basically what you're trying to do is abuse a swarm of small tokens and then with Anthem effects make them very big. Uh, you're able to do this with the card March of the Multitudes, which lets you pay 3 and X, and then create uh, X 1-1 one, one soldiers with lifelink. And you can also convoke, which means you can tap any number of your own creatures to feed into X. So it stacks really well if you have multiples, like the first one creates, say, 5 tokens, and you can tap those 5 tokens to create uh, X plus that 5 more, and then it kind of snowballs from there. Um, in terms of support cards... Uh, you have stuff like Lovestruck Beast that makes tokens, Amara makes tokens when uh, she taps, uh, you have Raise the Alarm that makes tokens, First Ironian Games, Elspeth. So there's a lot of cards that make tokens in the deck. Uh, and then you have token payoffs. You have Woodland Champion. Uh, whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield, put that many 1-1 counters on it, so it becomes a very big threat. Um, you draw cards off like Ironian Games. Conclave Tribunal can be used as removal, and then through Convoke you can, say, have four creatures out and then play this for free. Venerated Loxodon taps a number of creatures to make them bigger and put counters on them. Trustani makes all your creatures 1-1 one, one larger. Uh, Flower lets you give all your creatures plus 2-2, two, two, or early start of the game helps you fix your mana. And then you have Return of the Wild Speaker that either draws you cards or is another way to anthem up your team. Of note, these are soldier tokens, soldiers, and then the the Elspeth is human, so this is particularly non-human. Uh, Love struck also creates a human, so you got a mix of soldiers and humans in here. So it's something to keep in mind when playing out this card here. Um, so it's pretty much the deck. Uh, sideboard wise, you just have stuff for specific matchups, um, red based matchups, sac matchups, stuff like that. Gideon versus control, knight versus the Sakdos matchup, wander versus anything with big creatures you need to exile. Questing Beast and Ceratopsin against Control and Tolls Mirror is a way to have removal and token generation uh, in Selesnya colors. So we're going to run it through. Uh, I'm going to play a non-ranked match first, then depending on how it goes, uh, we'll jump into ranked. I just want to, I haven't played the deck yet, so want to see how it plays out. Was, I was on a good uh, run last night with uh, Historic Gruel. We'll play that out. Um... Mono red in historic. I was twenty seven and seven. Got into diamond, and then all that diamond's been is like gruel matchups, which are really tough for like big green, um, which is probably the hardest matchup to deal with. So I switched over to gruel and have been ember cleaving fools. Uh, fu it's fun to be on the ember cleave side, not being ember cleaved. Uh, but we'll test this out and see how it goes. Uh, you've noticed we're trying out the um. Because we're a turn behind, I'm going to mulligan this. Hi. Did I have the first hand back? Like, is this not just the first hand we had? Um, maybe put this back, keep you. Doesn't matter, we're going to shuffle anyways. So I'm going to get a forest first. So Plains is actually good. Plains lets me flower this turn. So next turn I can Forest and Love Struck Beast. Okay, so it looks like we're playing against Mono Black Devotion here. So we are open if we draw Love, uh, an untapped land for Love Struck. Gonna take this damage. Do need to be somewhat mindful of our life total. So Low Strider will allow them to play around. You're not what I want. Uh, so we need another white. So we'll just pass the turn here. So not the best show so far, mana wise. There is 22 lands in this deck based off the creator. Deathless Knight, sure. Um, I 
I think we just take this hit. Next turn I can love struck, which is big enough to block most things. That's seven nine. Go down to nine here. So we're dead to Grey Merchant anyways, which they could very well have. Uh, so this is free to play this turn, so we'll just cast it. That's what I like. Flower is good in that way. It helps you dig out lands early, and then late game it's still an effect. I may just concede this game and then fire up post sideboard. They haven't seen any of our token generation yet. At this point, they just think we're probably some sort of Selesnia mid range deck. So that's four, six, seven. Okay, we're dead. We block one, but we're not coming back from that. We don't have the board presence. All right, so this is a Devote Decree matchup. Um, the Wander doesn't seem that good. Knight of Autumn, probably not either. Well, they'll have enchantment creatures, perhaps. Maybe just Tolzmere. Uh, probably Giant Killer could come out. Cut the Return of the Wild Speakers. Aronian Games is okay. Love Struck's a decent blocker. Tribunal's removal, Tristani is okay. Uh, let's get rid of... Mara kind of seems bad in the right now. Because on two, we're unlikely to be able to attack in with her. So we can't easily tap her. She's better when you can just snowball her. Now you can with the Convoke. What is with not drawing lines in this deck? So I'm actually going to put a forest back. And then just use this to get a planes. That way we fix our mana better. So I'm going to raise the alarm this turn and then I can love struck and raise the alarm. So Timorette's not really that scary right now. Fenlarker. Huh. Kind of want Trustani, but we're a ways away from it. And I can go pretty wide right now. Probably just get rid of Trustani. If I had the lands to cast it on curve, I'd consider it. Ooh, so three, so I can do this for five this turn. So not bad, I can do it for five. That gives me a bunch of lifelink ones and then I can uh, Devout Decree, the Nightmare Shepherd. So I want to do this. 
First Aronian Games. This will draw some cards, so it's probably reasonable to keep on top. Um, I can push through damage, like they can block in trade, so I think we still push through. We need to be the aggressor in this matchup. It also takes some devotion off them. Okay. Ritual of Soot. So that one hurts. Um, I think we go Love Struck first. Playing this this turn will enable us to attack in with it. Wasn't expecting them to have Ritual. That is worse now, because they get to get rid of that. So, usually I'd hold some lands, but because we can, we have a big X spell, the more lands in play, the better. Okay, so they Gary us here. It's a big chunk of damage. They can sack the Fenlarker to draw a card. Yeah, they opt not to. So I can do this for three. It's not the most, but it does help. Well, you would have been better last turn. So they can block and sack. Actually, they could just block like that. That was silly. Not enough coffee in right now. I may want to go up another land. Probably going to take out the giant killer and play uh, another land. We missed line drops too often for it to be coincidental. Um, I'm gonna take this too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's see what our outs are. Hey Quantum, how's it going? So I'm testing out Aether Hub's uh, MTG Assistant. So it doesn't give you the post sideboard, but it does like leaderboards and stuff like that. So I'm trying with that. I got Woe Strider. So if they find a Shepherd, let's just go get a Plains. Tristani would be good, Elspeth would be good. Okay, Loxodon's not bad. I want to keep enough blockers. I'm just going to do one. It gives me some lifelink. Um, not that good so far. This is the first game. Uh, both games, first game we mulled to five, second game we mulled to six. Just haven't really got much in terms of lands going. Uh, we had a nice board, but they ritualed us. Trying to see. I can add another land to the deck. It's only playing 22. Okay. Well, they're just going to keep drawing cards, which is kind of annoying. They 
Ryder here. And they also have the mana to eat something to gain some life to offset the life loss. The thing to devote decree gets around a lot of this, so. The board of one ones isn't that good. Uh, at least it's a castle. Okay, let's just call this one quits. They're gonna be able to attack in, we're only at seven. I wanna add another land. And then we'll uh, fire it up again. Let's go down the giant killer and go up the planes. Especially just with so much in terms of like higher cost stuff. Like I understand you're convoking some of it, but you still need to be able to cast your spells early. Let's fire it up for another one. See how it goes. It's kind of cool with the Aether Hub uh, extension. Like it gives you kind of interesting stats in between as your games load currently 17th on the ladder for their thing they're doing a 500 hundred dollar giveaway split between the top eight for this season yeah it's pretty sweet like the only thing that untapped does that it doesn't do is uh post cyborg statistics keep we have spells So I'm probably going to lead on Woodland Champion and then raise the alarm into it. Let's go get a Plains. Okay, so it's likely a Gruly Boy deck. Okay, looks like they missed lands. So I'm assuming it's Gruel. Bring in the Wanderer. Bring in Tolzmir. Like, chances are if they have Cleave, we die to Cleave. So maybe a couple Questing Beasts, just because it trades well. Returns probably too slow along with Aronian Games. Actually, how reasonable am I to attack with Amara? You know, on the play, let's go Aronian. And then on the draw, I'll bring in Amara. It's the only problem with Amara. Like, with so many creature mirrors, how likely are we going to be able to actually tap her down? Like, she, if we run into, like, blue-white control, then we can just keep tapping to our heart's content. All right, let's keep. This might be Stompy. Gruel typically doesn't play Lovestruck Beast. Yeah, so it's just mono green. So I probably should have attacked with this. It was probably a free attack. So next turn I could wander. Ah, oh, they have the Great Henge. That's no good. That's going to give him quite a bit of card advantage. Okay, so saves us some life. So they could have Questing Beast. I'm going to hold back. 
just this turn. Because we can do a big march next turn, and then I could follow it up with Flourish as an Anthem. Because um, if they have Questing Beast here, I'm able to block it with Lovestruck Beast. Okay, they go Yorvo. Wander is actually probably really good in this matchup, just the fact it can exile a lot of these threats. I think I'm going to get rid of Yorvo. It gets a lot bigger. Because what I'm able to do here... Uh, does it prevent fights? It's a good question. So, prevent all non-combat damage. No, fighting is technically they deal combat damage to each other, I believe. You're lower than worms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So, X6. So, I'm just going to take the damage here and then uh, flourish... Uh, so the Growth Chamber Guardian and the Raid Henge is pretty sweet together because it gets you um, just search for a land or search for another one automatically. Okay, they're going defensive. I could set up another turn, but I think we make them defend here. Oh, I guess it does stop the fight. The Wander. Um, I could put through some damage here, but I think we just go all face. Make them have it. We do gain a bunch of life as well. And then that takes them off from attacking with Lovestruck Beast. And then I can follow it up this following turn. Okay, I'm gonna trade with the Lovestruck Beast here. Or the Questing Beast. So they can just play out three Growth Chamber Guardians here. I guess it's still what the trample gets over. Um, probably dead, because flourish gains us some life, but they have three blockers here. Yeah, we're dead on this one. Wander did prove pretty good there. But they did take us out that one. Um, so in this matchup, they're base green. They have the Henge, so I do want these Knights. Aronian's games has felt pretty lackluster. Uh, March has been good. Questing Beast is fine. Venerated Locks on fine. If we can get this going early, it'd be good. Tribunal. Probably cut an Elspeth. Do I want? I'm gonna play a return instead of the Elspeths. This is just gonna get chumped by everything on their board. They're playing Stompy, so they could very well have the two mana. 3-3 three, three with the counter on it. They're playing Yorvo on 3. Alright, keep looking for lands. 
that is the land. So what I can do is I can go raise the alarm into venerated Loxodon. Uh, Great Henge could be an option, but we do have quite a density of non-creature. Whenever it attacks or blocks, if you control another non-human, it gets plus one one. So we're just going to take this damage. Like we could turn it on with, you know, I'm going to try it at the Henge. So we'll just do this now. It gives us a 4-4. Four, four. It's a good blocker. And then it upgrades these. Next turn, I could go Questing Beast. In here, they need to decide if they want to block Questing Beast. I'll take that. It slows them down from their Henge. If we can keep them off Henge, then it's good. You're non-human. Okay, they have Quester Sin of their own. So I'm just gonna block here. I can do this at instant speed. That's terrifying. So let's just refill our hand. Wander is great as well as Conclave Tribunal. I can play out both of those next turn. And Shadow Sphere. I need to take this off the table. So I go Wander here. It's basically going to be a one for one. I do that and then I just, I don't want them to put counters. We drew a lot of lands, which wasn't great. Okay, so they're keeping Wildwood Tracker back, which is interesting. I can Knight of Autumn this Shadow Sphere. Jeez, drew a lot of lands. Let's see, see what we have on top. More lands. Mm. Do I care about Shadow Sphere right now? Probably not. I can double block if need be. I think we lose to Great Henge. We don't lose to Shadow Sphere right now. If they're just playing out like Pelt Collector, it's fine. Okay, that's pretty solid. So one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can do both. So let me do this. This just lets me get my team a lot bigger. And then I can just play a tap land. So if we draw a march, then we're basically way ahead. Them just drawing pelt collectors isn't helping that much. Hi. One, two, three, four, five. So we're still off. Westerson. That one's a bit scary. They can move over the Shadow Sphere. 
It does get Trample, so then it only needs to deal a point of damage. I'm going to trade here. Surprised I didn't move it over. Guess this does get a three power on them. March of the Multitudes, Trust Annie. We got a lot of cards. Tolls Mirror would be decent. That's pretty sweet. Push through a bunch of damage here. Ten, eighteen, twenty-one. So not quite lethal, but a good chunk of damage. Looks like they're trading with part of my board. That's fine. We clear out their board, and I'm still left with ways to generate tokens. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then starting next turn, I can make two tokens a turn. Doesn't seem like the best trade for them. And at this point, Mono Green doesn't really have a comeback mechanic. I'll just make a token and then take him from there. Healthy. Yep. Got him. Get him, got him good. So let's try out the Great Henge, see how it goes there. So how many creatures do we have? Six, eight, sorry, six, ten, fourteen, let's try this out. No, I think Great Henge is whenever you cast a creature, not when it enters the battlefield. Or whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control. So we don't get it off some of these other effects, but... I think the life gain and just occasional... would be fine. We'll try it out. We'll see which version we like the most. That one drop wasn't too bad that they were playing. There's also um, playing like Voracious, the, the Raptor that proliferates could be something that's interesting. We're creating a lot of like counters on the stuff. We just haven't really had a chance to play the Eronian games. In the games we had it, like, we were either ahead on board with some big stuff, and at least Henge generates life. Okay, we're gonna try this one out. We'll get to see how Amara is here, hopefully. Okay, so Jun Sacrifice. I'm really, oh, this might just be Golgari food. They just have cat cat. Huh, cat double oven. Sounds fun. So we'll see, hopefully it's not Jund, it's just the Golgari food, because if they have uh, Mayhem Devil here, we're not going to get out. 
from under it. Turn one oven, turn two cat oven. Ooh, Abzan food? That's interesting. So Trostani, or sorry, Amara gets to attack in here. Creates a 1-1, one, one, which triggers Woodland Champion. So this is just going to be a block sack. I do think next turn I'm going to pay a full price Conclave Tribunal. And then take them off one of these ovens. It just slows them down a bit. Prevents them from being able to double block. I don't know what's in Abzan food. This one looks like a brew. Oh, you know what it might be? It might be Doom Foretold. Yeah. Called it. Um. Honestly, at this point, Woodland Champion's just going to get chumped. This can let us go wide. So, let's attack with both. I'm gonna get rid of Conclave Tribunal, or get rid of Doom Foretold with Conclave Tribunal. We are slowly just dying to These stupid cats, they're hitting us for two. Yeah, I, li I really like Doom Foretold. Basically what you do is on your upkeep, you get a cat back and then it sacrifices to Doom Foretold so you can kind of lock your opponent out that way. So Tristani would also be good if we can get her down next turn. Um, get a forest, which we're short. This is going to force us to sack. They have an extra cat, uh, food for the cat. So, a cool thing here, I can do this, then I can do this. And then that should gain us a lot of life next turn. I'm going to sack this uh, Loxodon to the Doom Foretold. Actually, I might sack Trustani. Because then I can play another... No, I think we play Great Hen. We get rid of Loxodon and just play out a Great Henge. No, Trustani lets me go wider. Sack the Tristani, get another Tristani. Attack with everything. And then sack the Loxodon on the way down. So do this, we can gain a bunch of life here. So I'm actually going to do this and then I can uh, venerated Loxodon again on my remaining board. So what happens is with Goose, you make an extra food each turn, which allows you to sack the, the familiar and then get it back. So it's kind of a, a roundabout way. So they're going to sack these two so I don't gain that life, but I'll gain at least six life here.
So we're like dead to Kai's wrath, but we're dead to Kai's wrath regardless. Not really in a situation to play around it. So here they sack a cat. So basically like they've got us in a lock where we're gonna have to keep sacking, but because we're a density of tokens, we're able, yeah. So they're not gonna be able to beat the tokens. So I didn't get to test though Henge there, but it is something. Um, so in this matchup, they just concede. So Doomed Foretold's biggest weakness is tokens. We are a token deck, which inherently causes them some strife. We are happy with that match. Cube starts in five minutes. We'll do a cube later today. Just gonna give Arena a quick reset, and then we'll fire it up for one more match, see how it goes. Yeah, we're 100% with Henge in hand. I don't know how great it would have been in that particular matchup, only because um, we weren't really drawing much gas like beyond that, and they were going to eventually get us to sack it to the Henge. Or uh, to Doom Foretold. I think Doom Tokens might be pretty good like an abzan variant with doom foretold because then you just force your opponent to sack stuff but then you're not really having much stuff for yourself to sack so it probably wouldn't work out that well i may try out um abzan doom in historic <sighs> way too many lines white source Uh, get us a green source. Okay, so either mono white flyers or blue white flyers. This is an activated ability, so. Problem here too is Amara gets hit by like we can't really attack into this tithe taker. This tithe taker is actually super annoying because a lot of what we're trying to do is march at instant speed. Ha! Huh. If they tap our thing with Law Rune, we get a token. Ah. Uh. Going bigger than us. Still missing land drops. If we hit a land, I would have continued on that one, but realistically, we're pretty far behind there. Uh, Wanderer seems fine. Questing Beast seems fine. Uh, probably a Tolzmere. Mara is bad against the creature based deck. Elspeth's probably also bad here. Run it like that. This deck's pretty swingy. And like the mana is really awkward. Sure. I have land, so I'm not going to be particular here. Feels like the deck wants at least a one, another one drop, maybe. So now we're seeing the bad side, drawing all our big drops without having enough of a token army. I'm probably just gonna 
venerated this. And then I could follow it up with Trust Annie. It'll get really big. Problem is too, we're very weak to flyers. To be honest, I'm probably gonna Tolsmere. The loyal Pegasus here. I take 8 this turn, so I need to do that. So, take that out. This also forces them to attack with one of their Tithe Takers in order to trigger the Loyal Pegasus. We can take this attack in. And then I have Trust Annie. So something to keep an eye, an eye on. Okay, so Law Rune. She gives... So just take the block here. So they do get another flyer, so they're gonna be able to hit us for three a turn. And another tithe taker. Um, Cause the problem is they can hit us for bunch in the air. So next turn they could effectively hit us for one, two, three, four, five in the air. Yeah, let's pump through a bunch. We're not going to win this game playing defense. I can gain four life next turn at least. Go get a, another planes here. So this actually works kind of cool together. Arden Veil vale puts a counter on this every turn. So unless they have a way to Get rid of our bigger stuff. Should be able to race them this turn. Because if they tap something down here. You don't have a legendary, so that doesn't turn on. So this is playing the cautious way, Tristani back. Oh, they have raised the alarm. Okay. They survive for a turn. I do gain the life though. I really just wanna buy another turn gaining life. think we want love struck I want like March of the multitudes or one of our anthem effects so they swing for five in the air they can hit for six 
not quite enough. Unless they have like rally the wings or some sort of pump effect. But I feel if they have a pump effect, they would have just all attack. Okay, so they can make a token here and they can tap something down. Hui. So I'm gonna play this out now, just because it could gain us life if need be. Yeah, got him that game. Mm. Because they have flyers. You seem kind of slow otherwise. The Wander, we can probably cut, maybe bring in Elspeth. Maybe... Gideon's not bad either, because it can give lifelink. Let's try it like that. Yeah, well, we still got one more Quantum. Gotta see if we can take this last one. time dealing with double questing beast like even if they get rid of the first one you still have to deal with the second one here and then it plays nice offense defense Sure. You're going to spend your whole turn to deal three damage. I'm happy with that. That'll be nice as well. So this turn, I'm probably just going to go tap land. Cool thing too is I can uh, attack requesting beast and then tribunal or uh, locks it on it. Okay, so they are playing anthem effects. Don't think I take this trade. That's actually very good. Makes me get this up to three. Hey Gabrib, or Gabri Cube, how's it going? Just wrapping up the last game here with uh, green white tokens. Started off with uh, the list someone got mythic with and just been doing a little tweaks here and there to personal preference. Uh, I think it's you get to play, so it's all the cards that are currently on arena and you draft off those. So you can do this. Maybe I just make tokens this turn. So one, two, three, one, two, three. That only gives me three tokens. So I can questing beast. Yeah, I think I wanna get a, a few more tokens out of this. 
So I'm going to attack. They can trade with the Loxodon if they want, but they need to decide that attack on their own. So we'll take that. I want this gone because this is just making us lose a token. So that's 610. So I have to block because then I'm dead to the fairy godmother. So if I'm blocking, let's soak up four. So raise the alarm, comes in. I get two counters. Then I can't cast Love Struck Beast. I can. So I could flourish for land. Start with that, because I need more lands. Can do this. And then I can Do this. It's not the best, but it gives me some lifelink blockers for a turn. Uh, thanks for the follow. Um, I'm going to do some more budget decks now that the season restarted. Um, I'm waiting for the new set to drop so then we can start building some budget decks with the new set. Uh, there's a lot of cool cards. There's some pretty powerful uncommons as well. So they can tap down one if they want. I'm just going to throw these in the way. Gain us some life for the turn. Just trying to build my mana. In my board state. We're pretty far behind. Again, just any flyer has been proving to be quite problematic. And not having any real removal outside of Conclave Tribunal. So I can double block here, but then I'm dead. I think we just do this. Okay, so you're free to cast. Just to get another land. Free attack here. So I can tap. So I can tap one, two, three, four. F no, I have to do my full board. Should have done Love Struck Beast and Venerated Loxodon. Heroic Banner comes down. really don't have any reason to uh... oh sorry uh, yeah so I'm gonna do budget decks usually what I do is whenever the new set comes out I try to build some budget decks uh, using the new sets cards as well so I need conclave tribunal it's our only out and land all right we're losing to these janky decks. We're not the best suited. Overall, the reason I don't play Selesnia tends to be a little lackluster. Congrats to the guy who got to Mythic with it, but it just feels clunky. Like you're not really, unless you get those explosive draws, I do think you want some sort of one drop in the deck, and I don't think Amara is very good. Um, like, 
against a variety of decks, can't really attack in with her, so she can't do that much. Uh, I'd probably cut the Henge, cut the Amaras, and play um, probably uh, the one with Afterlife. I forget its name. This guy, Hunted Witness. Seems like a better option on one. Uh, it gives you a little bit more utility, especially to play into these later spells. Um, and then it gives you a lifelink token on the way back. Uh, so I'm going to wrap this one up. Thanks for everyone who stopped by. Uh, I'll probably be back later today with another deck, probably some Gruul and Historic as I'm uh, ranking up. Thanks for stopping by. If I don't see you, have a great weekend.